Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this video, we're gonna be reviewing Shazam. So this movie is basically just the DCEU's attempt to kind of avert attention away from the MCU. Unfortunately, it failed. Now it only failed because Captain Marvel beat him to it. Is that like a personal attack or something? Yes, it is. Okay, but on a serious note, this movie is basically uh, DC's not Superman character. He's basically all powerful and it basically just is the story of a kid who is kind of not in the best situation and he gets superpowers wherein every time he says Shazam he gets all kinds of crazy power and turns into an adult and of course he can say it again to just get rid of the power and it's kind of like a fun thing where he goes in and out Clark Kent has a phone booth this kid has a magic word that turns him into a superhero and it's pretty fun I mean it's it's based on a on a teenager so it's not the most dark movie tonally it's not the most serious movie but it isn't just made for kids now there is some issue with that as we go and I'll talk about that as the review progresses but overall it's a it's, it's a movie made for adults and kids alike now before we get into any of the details I'm gonna point out I'm not gonna spoil anything it's not the kind of movie where there's like a whole lot of plot twists really so it doesn't matter that much but I'm not gonna spoil anything I'll keep it spoiler free so you can go ahead and watch the video at your leisure and it'll be okay so let's go ahead and dive into it the first thing I want to talk about is the cast we have two main young people in the movie they're both teenagers and you have the one kid which is Billy Batson and then you have his brother which is the kid with the crutch and he calls himself a cripple in the trailer and that kid's actually the strongest character in the movie as far as I'm concerned the writing for him is really good and he delivers it really really well he's an incredibly likable character and the actor does a great job portraying that character on the other hand we have the young man who's playing Billy Batson and he is not bad but he's not particularly good and I think that is not necessarily his fault it's kind of hard to pinpoint uh, because and we'll talk about this more when we get to the writing section of the review he doesn't he doesn't really have a chance to do much, I guess is a good way of putting it. Most of what he's involved in is very cliche, teenage angst, we've seen it a million times type of stuff, whereas the other kid has a whole lot more personality and a little bit more um, character to him. So I can't really blame the actor necessarily. It's not bad by any means, it's just kind of like, eh. You kind of leave feeling, okay. That was fine. Whereas the other kid, like, I, that was an enjoyable character to watch, so I'll, I'll give him that. Then, the next person we have to talk about is Zachary Levi, who is Chuck, and I'll probably refer to him as Chuck going forward, because as far as I'm concerned, he will always be Chuck. It was a really good show, if you haven't watched it, check it out. And he plays Shazam. So the trick for him playing this character is that he has to be a kid, but also an adult. And I think they did a really good job casting Zachary Levi because he's got a very playful personality in the first place. He's known for being very comical and geeky and it suits the role perfectly. I think, you know, many people were kind of skeptical when they cast him because when he does transform into the adult and he's all muscular and everything, he's very muscular and everything. And Zachary Levi is not necessarily that physique. He doesn't have that body type. So people were a little skeptical, but they decided to give him a very padded super suit, which is not bad. It doesn't not work. Let me put it that way. It's not the best thing in the world. Uh, for example, uh, the Amazon Prime show, The Tick, he's got a fully padded super suit also, but it works better for him because it goes up and over his head. Whereas in this, it stops at his neck. So it is a little bit weird looking, but it's not bad. It's fine, you kind of forget about it as you're watching the movie, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. But it doesn't really matter that much how he looks because Zachary Levi really carries the char character very well. He does a really good job of playing the kid who is an adult and is a superhero at the same time. So very pleased with that overall. The last main character we want to talk about is the bad guy played by Mark Strong and he plays your basically generic bad guy. There's really nothing remarkable about this performance. That's not Mark Strong's fault, that's just the way it is. I think that's his name, am I saying it? I think, that sounds wrong, but that's his name, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, it's not bad, like he doesn't do a bad job, but kind of like I talked about a little bit before, it's not necessarily the actor, it's the writing. The writing in this movie is not incredibly substantial. And again, we'll talk about that again in a minute, but the bad guy's your most basic bad guy, realistically speaking. I want power, you have power, give me your power, sort of situation. So it's not 
It's not the most interesting character, doesn't take the best acting chops, but Mark Strong's a good actor and he does what he can with the role and is fine and there's no issues there, so that's fine. And the last thing I want to mention, just a side note, is Jerry from Walking Dead is in the movie and he's great. I think we should just have him in everything. I like him a lot and he's really fun to see on screen, so I don't know why we don't get more Jerry. I think we should probably get more of him. Uh, it looks to me like he's not acting that much when he plays these roles because they're always all the same thing, but it's always very likable, so I wouldn't mind that. Like, go ahead, give him, give him some more roles. Let's get him in some other superhero movies. That'd be fine with me. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the writing of this movie, and this is probably the weakest part of the film. I think that's the best way of putting it. It's not bad, but it is somewhat restrained. I think is probably a good way of putting it because they clearly have a dark tone throughout part of the movie. Uh, the bad guy is relatively bad, quite evil, and that's fine. I mean, that's good. That's what you want to see out of a bad guy. If there's nothing at stake, that's not a good bad guy. However, because it's also geared towards kids and kids are a main focal point of the movie, they can't go too dark with it. So, at, at a lot of points in the movie, it feels like the writing is directly geared toward that audience, rather than making it something everybody can watch and the adults will pick up on the darker stuff and the kids will pick up on the lighter stuff. A lot of the writing is very kind of cliche and Saturday morning cartoonish. Now that probably sounds worse than I actually mean it to mean, mean it to be, mean it to whatever, but I hope you get what I'm getting at. I'm trying to kind of use a little bit of hyperbole to convey what I'm saying. So hopefully, hopefully you get it. If not, we'll talk about it in the comment section below. But it's not bad. Again, it's just, at some parts you're like, that's... It feels a little cheap. Like the writing is not very deep. And I'm not saying that just because it's about kids. Like, you can have a movie about kids and have very good writing, good character development, but in some instances, the character development is just so cliche and so we've seen it a million times that it doesn't help the movie any. It doesn't hurt it, but it doesn't help it. So I think that's the best way of putting it. As far as dialogue and stuff goes, like, that part of the writing's fine. I don't have any issue with that. It's just the kind of general tone, general flow of the movie. Uh, pacing I didn't think was too bad. I thought it was pretty good overall. The The origin of the character. I mean the whole thing's an origin story really, but probably about half of it is the origin of the character and then maybe the second half is the kind of filling out the suit moment, the, the learning to be the hero type of thing. I think that's a pretty good balance. I'm tired of these origin stories that take up and up through the final act for the character to really become anything, whereas this, it, I think they did a pretty good balance with it, pretty good job. I like that a whole bunch. And there, and the, there is one scene at the end which is no more origin story really and straight up superhero fight but i can't talk about that too much because of spoilers so overall the writing's fine in that regard but just a little bit eh, tonally awkward not too bad though okay next thing is to talk about the action it's a superhero movie of course there's going to be action and we have a character who is basically superman but magic instead of alien and that is sam now because he is basically superman he's got a lot of flying and punching involved in his fighting style and that is not unlike Dragon Ball or The Matrix. A lot of these fight scenes are very similar to the Matrix slash Dragon Ball mid-air fights, which we've seen in Man of Steel, which we've seen in The Matrix, which we've seen in Dragon Ball. They're not bad. The bad guy has essentially the same power as, as the main character. So, um... The fights are just not as interesting as they probably could have been if it was a different character, but there's not a whole lot you can do when your superpower is kind of like unlimited strength and flight. So punching happens to be the thing they do mid-air. I don't fault them for it, but it doesn't lead to the most interesting action. It's not bad again. So if you haven't noticed, there's kind of a trend in this review. Nothing's really bad in this movie. There are just some things that aren't especially good. That's probably a good way of putting it. And that's true for the action as well. It's not bad. Plenty of it is fine. Some of it's good, but most of it is just fine. It's all right. Nothing particularly interesting. Nothing we haven't really seen before, I don't think. Nothing stands out in my mind, in fact. I just saw it yesterday, and I can't quite, can't quite place anything that stood out as being a really good scene for the action. So it's not bad, but it's not especially noteworthy. Next up, we're going to talk about the special effects. And in this movie, for most of the movie, there's not a whole lot of, like, heavy CGI. Obviously, we have guys flying around and doing stuff like that, but that, by today's standards, is not particularly difficult, and they are successful with it. Uh, but there is one element to this movie which requires a lot of CGI, because the things that I'm talking about are purely CGI. And they're done pretty well. They're not impressively well done, 
but they are definitely good enough. They don't take you out of the movie at all. They don't look cheesy or anything, but they are not as good as we've seen in other in other films. I think that's probably a fair assessment. It, it looks fine, but it's not noteworthy, kind of like the other flaws of the movie. Nothing terrible, but nothing particularly good. All right, it's time for the final verdict of the movie. As you probably have noticed, the through line through this whole thing is it's not bad in any way, and in some ways it's pretty good, and in other ways it's just not as good. Which leaves me feeling content. I'm content with this movie. It was a lot of fun to watch, Zachary Levi being the main contributor to that, and then I can't think of the kid's name, I'm sorry, but it's not particularly relevant to the review, but the, the brother. He was really enjoyable to watch, so having those two interacting back and forth throughout the film made the film what it is as far as I'm concerned. The superhero stuff was fairly standard, so it didn't, it wasn't remarkable, but those two had really good chemistry and they both did a really good job in their individual roles, made the movie incredibly fun to watch. It wasn't a spectacular film by any means, but it was a good film that was a whole lot of fun to watch. And that's pretty much all you need in a movie like this as far as I'm concerned. So I'm definitely going to recommend it. I'm curious what you guys thought about the film. Let me know in the comment section below. Don't spoil anything though. If you're going to spoil something, put spoiler in big letters at the front. Leave some space, then type it. That way we don't ruin it for anybody who's watching this review, which is titled spoiler free. So don't spoil anything. But yes, let's talk in the comment section below if you like this film, what you think about it, and that kind of stuff. So there it is, guys. That's my take on the movie. I do have new videos up just about every single day. Sometimes we're a little slow when there's not a lot of stuff to review, but I try to keep it pretty regular. Minus Wednesdays, we don't typically upload on Wednesday, but there's lots of content here. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't, guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And in the meantime, Shazam.